you know that feeling you get when you're editing a model that you've already created and you realize it would have been easier to just delete the whole thing and start from scratch? Well, I'm gonna try to show you that that's not always the case. We're gonna look at an example of a gable end wall in a SketchUp model that we're gonna extend one of the walls by two feet and we're gonna fix the pitch of the roof and make sure everything lines up perfectly without you having to start from scratch again. Hey, I'm Matt from MasterSketchup.com, author of SketchUp to Layout and SketchUp and Layout for Architecture. Now, this model is actually the example model that you get when you purchase SketchUp and Layout for Architecture. The, the book was actually co-written with Nick Sonder, and he is an amazing architect, and I kind of butchered his model here. I deleted some of the windows just for this example, but we're going to extend this wall by two feet and we're gonna fix the roof line as well now for simplicity I'm going to hide some of the trim I mean ideally when you're if you're making a major change like this you want to try to make those changes early on in the project that way you're not having to go in and you know modify all of this trim and you know the details uh the lights and all that kind of stuff so just for simplicity in this video we're gonna hide that stuff and we're gonna just work with the walls and the roof here now before we start making changes let's actually look at why would this be so challenging you know what changes do we actually have to make so the first thing to realize is the the room in here the ridge is centered in the room so if we move this wall two feet out this way we also have to change the ridge line so it remains centered in the room so let's take a look at the outside and see how that affects the roof line so if we move this wall two feet out this way we have these overhangs there's one here there's an overhang here so this overhang would also need to move two feet in order to maintain the same offset this overhang over here actually needs to stay within the same plane because this overhang you know the offset is measured from this wall here so we want to maintain that same offset for the overhang so in reality when we push this wall over this roof is actually going to get raised a little bit in order to maintain the same pitch in order to have the ridge you know still centered in the room so this ridge point is actually going to move over to about right there which means this whole plane this whole surface of the roof is going to kind of raise up at an angle so you can see how complicated this can get and it can be a little overwhelming when you're trying to figure out okay what's the first step what should I do to you know get this done so the first thing is going to be to dive into the wall and just as a side note if you notice I'm using this this keyboard shortcut this is a custom keyboard shortcut and I actually have an article on how to create your own keyboard shortcuts which I'll link to in the description below but I'm using this feature in the view menu called hide rest of model and I love having that as a keyboard shortcut because when you're working on entities that are inside of a group you know I wouldn't I can't see the inside of the room because the roof and the rest of the model is hiding it so if I just tap I use the letter X now some people have kind of criticize me for for using X but really honestly for me it's just I like having it right where my finger is it's something I use so much that it's more convenient for me to have it right there than to like use the letter H or something like that for hide rest of model but that's just me you can choose your own keys however you want to do it so anyways we'll go into this room here and we're gonna select this wall we're going to select this wall and actually I just remembered I don't have my 
my handy dandy keyboard shortcut display thing. Let me open that up for you. Okay, there we go. Now you can see what keys I'm pressing when uh, when I hit my keyboard shortcuts. So there's X for the uh, hide, unhide, and spacebar, of course, for the select tool. So I'm gonna hold down shift to select both sides of this wall. I also wanna select this little piece here uh, because we need to move that as well. Now, actually, I forgot a step because before we do that, we actually want to, we want to maintain the pitch of the roof. So we're going to use the protractor tool and I'm going to just click on this line to create a guide there. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And what we'll do is we'll actually add this guide to the selection and watch this when we grab the move tool we're going to move it along the green axis and we'll go two feet enter so by selecting that line and moving it along with the wall now we've created this excellent intersection reference that we can now move the ridge to so i'll select this little piece which represents the the ridge of the wall and I'll click that and snap to that intersection and now we're done with the wall it was it was as simple as that so I don't need these guides anymore so I can go to edit delete guides and now let's take a look at what we need to do to the roof so we'll jump outside of that and we'll jump into this roof group all right, so we're gonna use the tape measure tool again to create some guides to help us figure out exactly where the new position of you know the different parts of this roof need to be. So T for tape measure, and I'm gonna use this bottom edge as the reference for our guides. So I'll create one here, I'll create another one here, and you can see those, those guides extending out. Now, I also want to create some reference guides for the overhangs for the um, for the eaves of the roof. So I'll create one here, and I will create one here. So we've established where everything currently is, and now we can move the guides to where we need them to be, and that will create those intersections for us that we can use to snap the geometry to. So we need the overhang to move the two feet. But we also need the ridge to move. It's not gonna be two feet, it'll actually be half that because we're at the midpoint. But all we need to do is select the angle guide and the guide we placed at the bottom and we'll use the move tool and we will move. And actually, we don't even need to really snap to that since we know we're just going two feet. We can just hover over any part of the model. We'll tap the left arrow key to lock the green axis and we'll bring the mouse in the direction we wanna go. We'll click and then we'll type in two feet enter. And now that is all we needed to do to establish the new point where the, the intersection, uh, where the ridge is gonna be. And we also now know where the uh, soffit overhang is going to be. So now we can hide rest of model and I also want to turn on x-ray mode because we're gonna make a selection we want to select not only everything over here, but we also want to select everything over here, but we want to make sure we're not accidentally selecting something that we shouldn't. So if I turn on x-ray mode, which you can either do right here, I have control D set up as a custom keyboard shortcut for that. And this is going to help me make my selections and make sure everything that I need in the selection is indeed in the selection. Now notice how I don't need to actually select you know, these faces in between or even these edges because since I'm selecting, like for instance, this edge right here is naturally gonna move with this selection because I have each endpoint that is between or, or that the edge is between, uh, those are connected to my selection. So they're gonna move uh, with it automatically. So then I can just come over here and grab this point. See how the whole thing is moving? And I'm just going right along the guidelines that I created until I get to that intersection. And then I'm clicking to finish. So we're maintaining the same roof pitch 
while updating the position of the ridge. And we can take a look and see what that does for us. So now we have this roof plane in the correct spot. So the only thing left to do is to go and update the overhangs. So this first overhang, so we'll hide rest of model, turn on x-ray mode again. And so I'm making sure I'm just clicking and dragging to select these entities here. And then with the move tool, I'm just bringing that down to the intersection that I created with those guides. Now with this overhang, the reason why we need to bring it back up is because this wall over here didn't actually change. That stayed exactly where it was. So we're just bringing this overhang back to where in plane with where it originally was. The reason why it moved forward is because we had selected this entire roof plane and slid it up along this guide right here. So unfortunately we can't just select this and slide it up and somehow snap to this guide. So we need to actually create another guide that will intersect with that. So what we'll do is we'll grab the tape measure tool, we'll start on this guide and we wanna find that vertical plane that it's gonna intersect with. So by tapping up on the arrow key or tapping the up arrow key, we can then snap to this plane, which is you know what we're gonna be moving along. So now with the move tool, I can snap to this edge, slide that up until I snap to that guide and we're finished. So now we have the proper overhang on the wall that we moved and we have the proper overhang on the wall that didn't move. So, you know, pretty quickly we were able to make a complicated edit to the model without having to start from scratch. So I hope you found this video helpful. Obviously you would have to go in and update the, you know, you'd move the door forward two feet. You'd have to update the foundation. You know, the further in you are in the project, the more work it's going to be. So you always want to try to make these changes up front, but don't despair if you are in a situation where you have to make these changes. So just by using guides in a clever way where you're creating those intersections of where you want your geometry to be. You can make these kinds of things really easy. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you're interested in getting more SketchUp videos and thanks for watching.